thank you so much for joining me today. I am so excited to be interviewing you. You have such a wonderful job at the White House. Tell me a little bit about what you do. Sure. Well, I'll talk a little bit about our team first. Okay. So the CTO team, the Chief Technology Officer team, is a new team created under this administration to be the voice of technology and data within the White House. My boss, Megan Smith, formerly of Google, reports directly to the president, and we inform every sort of technology policy from drone policy to internet net neutrality to AI to cybersecurity. My focus is on health data and innovation, and in that I have played a big role in helping to launch the Precision Medicine Initiative, working with the VP's team on the Cancer Moonshot, um, but also helping make sure that our delivery system payment strategies and policies in, are informed by a good view of data and technology. So first of all, I can't believe that there has not been this office in the White House before. Why is that? It's an interesting question. I think we previously have viewed technology as something that was sort of like like a typewriter, where it was the thing <laughs> that enabled the paper policy to work, right. but it actually didn't require its own set of thinking and policy. Right. Also, traditionally, the people that come into the White House are people who are in politics or people who have a strong background in a policy area. Mm. What we've learned, though, is if we want to build out policies and technology that reflect the way businesses and the world are operating, we need to bring people from those fields into the White House. So my colleague, uh, Ed Felton, is a um, computer science professor from Princeton. My other colleague, uh, DJ Patel, was the chief data officer at LinkedIn. So we're bringing the best of academia and the best of Silicon Valley into the White House to make our tech policy really drive forward innovation. I suppose politicians aren't exactly known for their tech savviness. Not so necessarily. They need a little bit of right, help. Okay. Right. Um, let's get right down to business. I want to hear, um, for people who don't know, can you describe the Precision Health Initiative? This initiative really um, is very near and dear to the president's heart. He, as one of the things he did as a senator, put forward a bill to launch something very similar. It's also very near and dear to Francis Collins's heart. He laid out a similar um, vision a decade ago. And the idea is that we'll have what I think of as Framingham 2.0. Remember Framingham, which was this amazing longitudinal study? What if we took that study into the modern age by enabling a vast array of digital data from wearables and sensors, from EHRs, from the environment, along with very modern ways to engage people using the platforms we all use, using social media, yeah. using all of the ways we interact right now with each other and with, with professionals and recruited a million people into this new cohort and then opened the data up to qualified researchers from any corner of the world. So this is a kind of data commons built on a different model of engaging with participants and leveraging all the data that we know should inform health. What do you say to people who are worried about Big Brother having access to their data? Well, first of all, the government's not going to hold the data. Mm -hmm. It will be the, the private organizations, the, um, the nonprofit that's actually going to come forward and be the recipient of the data. The other thing is we've built in privacy and security very strongly from the start. Generally, when we launch things like this, it's the agencies that really design them, as is the case with this. But the White House, um, we led the process for developing the privacy and security requirements that are going to be built into the fabric of this work from the very beginning. We're in an election year, so how do you think that the transition um, of the office of the president is going to affect this work? So, like I said, mm -hmm. um, very, very strong bipartisan support. We. Um, didn't expect the kind of enthusiastic, I mean, certainly across the board, the budget doesn't always get enthusiastic response, but really the investment from Congress is tremendous. We are bringing in a new director, NIH has recruited Eric Dishman from Intel, who both has this extraordinary history of building out open source technology, but also himself has thought very hard about patient engagement and how patients can and participants can be involved. He will be the new director starting in mid-June. He's, he's amazing. He's already building out a team. And then the other thing to remember is that NIH um, is one of those agencies that has just a couple of people who are political. Everyone else are scientists and technologists and people that will remain there and continue to build out this work. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining me yeah. today. My pleasure. Thank you.